welcome. Uh, this is a panel for uh, juniors and seniors to talk to some of our college students uh, to be uh, inspired. They have some great words of wisdom. Um, Bree and Gladys are going to be your uh, moderators today. And so uh, we'll start with you guys. I'm going to take my picture off so you can start. And um, there you go. Okay, so guys, like Kathy said, we just have a couple of um, college students that are here to answer some of your questions. We have a set of questions that we're going to ask that we're going to begin with. Um, and then we'll kind of open it up for you guys. So if you have questions as everything is going on, just type it in the chat box and um, they're going to see it so that we can ask them after we're finished with the other questions. Okay. So I have a couple of questions. So um, we have a couple of people. We have Brisa from Kingsville, Mauricio from Kingsville, Uriel from A&M, Rachel from A&M also, and then Blondine is at Texas A&M Corpus Christi. So even though this one of these schools might not be a school that you're interested in going to or that you apply to, um, I think it's really important to hear some of the experiences, some of the wisdom that they have being college students, especially with everything going on right now. Okay. So first question is, how did you guys decide on the school you were attending and what important factors helped you make that decision? Okay, so for me, the important factors that came in whenever I was choosing Texas A&M Kingsville was the distance, how far I was from home. Like I've mentioned before, and I'm sure my juniors have heard me say this, is that I did not want to go to a university where the rest of my peers were going to because I wanted to explore things on my own. So that was important to me also, like how much um, the peer size is to like the student faculty ratio. So I really did like that Kingsville was a smaller ratio compared to other schools. So size and location was a big one for me. All right, and so um, for me, I took a look at those things as well. And another important factor that I think would determine whether you're going to attend a school or not is the type of program they're offering. So depending on your major, uh, there's a lot of schools out here in Texas that have great programs depending on what you're gonna major in. So for example, uh, I decided to major in kinesiology, right? And so that kind of made me look into the what type of program they have. And so that kind of determined a little bit of why I was attending Texas A&M in Kingsville. One good advice that I have is um, don't set your mind to one really like narrow your choices down really early. Like don't set your mind to just one college, like open your options up until the last minute because a big factor when it comes to how I chose A&M is like definitely the cost. Definitely look at um, how much um, scholarships and financial aid they'll be giving you. And um, honestly, I'll be shameless here. I didn't want to go with the A&M at first, but then after looking at the package, I really looked into the other factors like do they have opportunities for me in the specific major that I want to be in. And that really like opened up my mind, like, wow, I didn't know like this college was actually a good fit for me. So definitely open your options up till the last minute. All right, so I'll be honest with you guys. Uh, the main reason why I pretty much attended Texas A&M was because when I was a CCC back in high school, uh, most of the CCC staff were pretty much hardcore Aggies. And they would always tell me, hey, a and is great. And they, they would tell me a lot of things about A&M. So, you know, I went there and I visited with the CDC. And, you know, I enjoyed the procedures of it, but I also enjoyed the traditions. I mean, a and is huge in traditions. And I enjoyed the whole aspect of like feeling like family when you come in here, everyone's nice to you. Um, so that's one of, one of the biggest majors why I decided to come here. All right, so- For me, it was- Go for it. Um, just for me personally, the reason I chose Corpus is because um, location-wise, it's not too far from home and it's not too close either. 
Um, the class size is really small too. You have like a lot of different classes that you can take. Um, uh, and the price as well. So it's like the, you actually, um, have the package that I got was the best out of all the packages that I got from other universities that I applied to. So those are the three main things that convinced me to come to Corpus. All right. So did any of you ever have any doubts about it being the university that you chose? Did your family or your friends discourage you? And if this was the case, how did you deal with this? And how did you decide that going to college was going to be the best option for you? I, um, there, someone texted in the chat that uh, talking about like kinesiology and its internships. I don't, I don't know if you want me to address that first before we move on to the next question. Um, let's wait and leave all questions till the end because someone's uh, monitoring right. the chat box. All right. So what was the question again? So the question, did you guys ever have any doubts about the school you chose? Did family or friends try to um, discourage you from going to college? And if they did, how did you deal with that and decide that college was going to be the best option for you? So for me, my family was very supportive. Um, they, you know, the whole the whole, the whole thing about going to college is pretty much an expectation. Um, once once I got here, my freshman year, it was tough, I'll tell you that. Uh, I did have doubts. I don't know if I belonged here. But, you know, when you have a good support system like CCC and your family and friends, uh, all that all that kind of changes on you. And then just the whole university kind of grows on you. And then from there, you just take it. So... I'll be honest with all of you guys. I did have a lot of doubts when I visit. I went to visit uh, Texas A&M in Kingsville because the other school that I had, other schools that I had uh, in mind, which were um, Texas, no, UT, UTA. It was uh, UT Arlington. I actually went to visit that school and I stayed over. Uh, they had a, a little event going on and so I got to really interact with a lot of the people there and got to see the campus for myself but for Kingsville I actually went last minute and I did not know much about the campus and the people I was going to meet and so I kind of went on a blind little tour and uh, I had to take a Greyhound bus over there and it was a it was a unique experience. I'm not going to forget it, but definitely look into the look into going onto the campus before you actually set yourself on going to a certain school, even if it's out of out of state. If it's out of state, it's a little bit more on the complicated side, but definitely pay a, pay a visit to it to your school that you're planning to attend. So I know a lot of um, students will say that you have many options to go to a lot of different two-year schools here in the Houston area. You know, there's WCJC, there's HCC, there's Lone Star. Why did all of you choose to go straight to a four-year university as opposed to starting and maybe doing your basic at one of the community colleges in town? A lot of people, well, I think a lot of people choose to do their basics at one of those like um, community colleges just because they expect it to be cheaper. But, um, um, and that's what a lot of people usually tell them, but what people are not telling, pe what people are not telling um, graduating students is that some universities don't accept your credits from those community college or they, um, they have specific courses that they want you to take at their university that if you take it at the university, they're probably not gonna accept it. And then um, another thing is, um, in order to transfer to a four-year university from a two-year, um, there are certain credits that you have to have. And if you don't have those credits, you won't be able to transfer. And then one reason why I, in particular, just chose to go straight to a four-year instead of going to a two-year was because of the fact that I didn't know if those 
courses were going to like transfer over. And a lot of people choose to go to the two year rather than the four year just because they don't know what they want to major in. But um, the same thing goes, um, you don't have to have a major right away um, just to go to a four year. It's better for you to go, it's um, better for you to go to a four year than it is to go to a two year just because um, the not only does the financial um, aid aspect change, but also the courses required change changes. Also agree with for her. Um, just going straight to a four year university is just the whole campus experience is much different than just going straight to a two year. Um, it might even encourage you to do even better than what you'd be doing at a two year. So definitely four year. And for me, I was just very fortunate to attend a four year university. And another another reason why I decided to do this was because of a statistic back in high school where it said um, back in my my high school has had a really low statistics about their graduating class attending four year universities and I just didn't want to be part of that statistic anymore. So that's one of my main reasons why I decided to attend a four year. I think um like another thing is that attending a four year university, there are a lot of options out there for and opportunities. Like just for example, there are like research like universities, they do a lot of they have a lot of research opportunities and like club opportunities. So in the end when what you want to get out of like your university experience is get like get an, as many like stuff down on your resume and stuff to get a job or internships or anything and those opportunities like really help to add to that. Okay. Um, I know I kind of outed everyone and said what school they go to, but what school do you attend? If you could repeat that again for some students that are just now getting on. And what is your favorite thing um, about the university or a memory that you had before maybe all of this kind of started happening <laughs> on campus? Okay, so I attend Texas A&M University Kingsville, and what I really like about Tamuk is how united everybody is. So no matter what events going on, a lot of people end up showing up thanks to Greek Life and other uh, clubs on campus. So I feel like that is the core of a university is like everybody's input. Yeah, adding, adding on to what uh, Risa said, Kingsville is a small town, so a lot of the students there, you're gonna see people regular on a regular basis that you would see, like you wouldn't see in a, in, in a big institution because it's just, it's not as small, but it, it's a medium sized school right now. And so I think one of the best events that they host and one of my favorite things about uh, Temuk is the fall festival, which, a lot of tents just set up in one street and it's an event where groups and like maybe big life and other student activities try to raise money just selling uh, amazing food that's for sure they do some fun games they even had paintball like two years ago i'm not sure about last year and they give you opportunities to just socialize you know it's it's a very fun event a lot of people are, are there to just have a good time so i go to Texas <laughs> this is for math, rachel yeah rachel, you're breaking up just a little bit oh. you sound, you're a little bit better now okay okay um, so the things that I like about this school is that one, it's a very big campus. We're a really big college town, and um, you can get you get to meet anyone really. And the second thing is definitely the school spirit and the traditions. Like the Aggie network, we have like everywhere you go, you can like you'll see an Aggie. Like we're all across the world. The network is like really big, and our school always stress on us talking about the Aggie network. Like in the future, like you can just network with an Aggie and you can get a job. That's what they say. <laughs> so, all right. So I add on to Rachel. I also attend Texas A&M University. 
And like she said, we are definitely on a whole different spectrum in terms of campus, like campus size. So we are 65 plus, 65,000 plus students. So that's a lot of people, right? But um, what she said, you know, the whole tradition is the whole family aspect, the whole spirit. Uh, it makes you guys come together. It makes the whole university come together. And one thing, like when you're involved in this campus, although there's 65,000 people, this campus starts to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So whenever you walk the halls, when you walk wherever you go to, you'll definitely see people out there, you're involved. Uh, you know, just don't let that discourage you. Like, oh, 65,000 people. Um, there's there's a lot of people you can meet. There's a lot of a lot of different things to do here at the university, pretty much. So I encourage you guys to definitely get out there. Okay. So a lot of our students say, you know, it's hard finding scholarships. And of course, it's not the most fun thing to do. So when you guys were in high school, did you apply for scholarships? Did you win scholarships? And if so, what kind of advice or what strategies and tips would you give to our juniors and seniors? Don't be afraid to hold anything back. <laughs> okay, disclaimer. So, you need money. First of all, you need to put yourself out there because there's a bunch of opportunities out there, but if you don't apply for them, then there's no way for you to later on be like, well, my financial aid package doesn't look too good because the, opp the opportunities were there. You just have to go out there and reach them. I'm pretty sure you've heard about me winning a lot of scholarships. I don't have the exact amount because I don't like to keep up with it. But I can tell you that like my first two years of college, I don't have to worry about paying for them. And if I continue to apply these scholarships, which I have, I won't have to pay for anything for the next four years. So definitely do put yourself out there and have confidence in yourself. I do recommend that. Um, I agree with Brisa. Um, I got, I'm so lucky, I got the Posse Foundation Scholarship, which is pretty much a full ride. Um, at first, it was like I didn't even think I was going to pass the first round of interview because there were so many people applying. But like Risa said, the confidence in, your, in yourself is really important. There's just not like any opportunity you find, you should just go for it because if you never apply, then you'll never get it. But if you apply for it and have confidence in yourself, then you still have a chance. And then All right, so, oh. no, 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 go ahead. All right, so if any students like in the uh, attendees, there's any students here that are TASFA uh, students, don't worry. There's always uh, another some uh, other scholarship options for for all of you. Don't be scared just because of your status. All right, that's something that kind of helped me back from applying to some scholarship just. I'm not a not everyone not the help like I went I went to a school out of state and I told them about Tesla and they didn't know that and I kind of felt like whoa like um, people only in Texas it only applied to Texas and that's what when I learned I was just like okay so it still doesn't matter if I'm not considered like a, a FAFSA student there's still a lot of scholarship options as a TESFA student as well especially here in Texas there's a lot of help that the school will give you and other organizations that support first generation TASA students like myself. I have a follow up question with that. Those of us that did apply to scholarships and kind of win some, I know some of our students say, you know, I applied to three and I just didn't hear anything back. So I gave up. So can one of you guys or some of you guys give us a, a roundabout number of about how many scholarships you applied to your junior and senior year so they can have an idea of a good number? <laughs> senior year, I think at first it was like it went from one to two a month to like second semester. It was like at least five scholarships a month. So. So if you could go back or what is one thing you wish you could go back and do differently during your junior and senior year of high school? Definitely, uh, me personally, I would go back and give myself more options um, because although I really am happy with the school that I ended up choosing, um, I feel like 
uh, I waited really last minute and could have um, given myself more time to be like 100% sure that I wanted to come here, that I was going to like love it here no matter what. Um, I would definitely like um, look for different schools and actually like go visit the campus, tour them, and like give myself like more options. Anyone else want to add to that question? I personally would definitely go back and study more on my SAT, ACT skills. Um, I was top 10% for my high school, which pretty much means automatic acceptance to most uh, public universities. But um, my ACT scores are pretty bad. They weren't that great. And some of the majors that I wanted to apply pretty much didn't let me, didn't let me have it pretty much, have it. Um, some of the some have requirements with ACTs that were way above my score. So sometimes you, I had to settle for a different major, but you know, don't let that discourage you. Once you're in college, you you start grinding, you start working that GPA back up, and from there you can move into that major that you want. So definitely, definitely that. I think to add to um, Uriel, like definitely study for these tests because. Like he said, even though if you're like already auto admit to some of the colleges, a lot of scholarships and financial aid still look at the scores to see like, like most mostly like merit based scholarships. So having a higher like test score really gives you a higher chance to get a lot of those scholarships. Another um, thing that I would have done like um, before I graduated high school was take the SAT and ACT a few more times. Not only uh, is it important to study, but once you start taking it a little bit uh, more than two to three times, like you'll you'll get a little gain a little bit more confidence, which would which would. Mauricio, Mauricio, we can't hear you right now. You're cutting off. Mauricio, did you mute yourself? Did I cut off? Yes. Okay, yeah. So just, Say that just again. take it just take it as as many times as, as you can and as you're able to, just to get familiar with the content. And it'll just help you out in the long run, especially if you have studied and just know your your stuff, you go into into the testing site with confidence and help you get a good grade. Um, so what can I do as a junior to prepare for senior year? I know some of the things that we talked about were scholarships and SAT. What were some of the different things? Um, how many more opportunities did your higher SAT or ACT score give you once you took it again and saw that score increase? So like for Uriel, did you maybe say, oh, I can actually have that major that I thought I couldn't have because of my SAT or ACT score? Or did you say, oh, I thought I couldn't go into this school, but now that I retook it and got this score, I can get accepted into this many more colleges? That's a good question. Um, I really don't know how to answer that. The whole SAT thing for me didn't go so well. So I really don't want to say, I mean, don't let it discourage you. Um, I am attending one of the top top universities here in Texas, and I'm doing pretty well. You know, even though my SAT scores were pretty bad back then, I'm still doing pretty well. You know, I'm I'm out there. I'm I'm a leader on campus. Um, I'm get, I'm getting good grades. Uh, even with those good grades, you know, they say C's get C's get degrees, but A's get FAFSA. So, um, <laughs> yeah, just work on those grades. Even even though you did pretty bad poorly on your ACT scores you'll be fine. Uh, as long as you put in the work, you have the discipline to, to do it. I think that's a good point to bring up, Uriel, just because you might not have scored as highly as you thought you could have on your SAT and ACT. Of course, like Mauricio said, taking it as many times as you can. But once you do get into college, like for maybe some of our seniors who have used all of our fee waivers, don't let that SAT or ACT score that you took this year, last semester, kind of determine your next four years in college. I think that's really important. Thanks. Yeah, don't, don't let the ACT score define you. So if you still have fee waivers available, take advantage of those because there are so many people that don't have fee waivers and they have to pay out of pocket to take 
their SAT or ACT. So if you have the opportunity to do so, don't be satisfied with your first score. Like if try to take up all your fee waivers taking that exam. Maybe, just maybe, you'll be able to increase each time. So I recommend you taking it as many times as possible as long as you have that fee waiver. I think we lost Rachel. And just to add one more note, thank you guys for bringing up SAT, ACT. And so if you do register for the SAT, ACT, it's super important that you do show up, guys, because you don't want that waiver to go to waste. Okay, so the next question is kind of a two part question. Um, the first part of the question is how did you decide on your major? Um, if you do in fact have a major declared. Um, and then I guess the second part of the question is, did you, do you have the same major that you started college with or did you change your major throughout your, your college career? Okay, so the way I went about uh, choosing my major, uh, as I mentioned, as I always mentioned to other individuals that I, I just tried to uh, give advice is that you want to see yourself doing what you're studying like five to ten years, you know, you want to see the uh, what the outcomes are in the long term. So for me, I went into the kinesiology uh, field or major. And the reason why I did that is because I love to uh, participate in sports. I love to work out. I love to just do a lot of physical activity. And so kinesiology uh, involves a lot of that. And you, you take a look at all of those uh, components in, in just exercise. And even if you decide to change, it's still a pretty broad uh, major. You can go into different in different avenues. So for example, uh, I have some friends in kinesi kinesiology that are kinesiology majors, but have uh, interest in sports management or physical therapy or occupational therapy. And so with that being said, uh, I took a look at, at my field in the long run. And so if you, if you think about it, in the medical field or in the um, physical therapy, which is what I'm working for, uh, you're always going to need someone there to monitor a lot of those testing uh, procedures, uh, any type of exercise prescription and stuff like that. So yeah, definitely think about it. Uh, think about what you love to do and just don't give up on it, especially I've seen a lot of people do this is um, some classes do get pretty difficult, but don't let that stop you from what you're, you're wanting to achieve, for sure. And thank you for bringing that up, because we understand that when you pick a major, it's not always a linear path to go into one profession. So thanks for that, Mauricio. Oh, hey, Rachel. So the question that we asked was, um, sorry, the question that was asked was, uh, what made, how did you decide on your major? Um, it's a two part question. So how did you decide on your major? And then if you, is this the same major that you entered college with or have you changed your major? Or are you thinking of a different plan? Um, can y'all hear me first of all? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I had to switch to my phone because the internet got cut off. But um, I'm currently a nutrition major and I hope to become a registered dietitian. Um, that's really what I've always set my heart to do. Like I've always wanted to be something in the healthcare field because um, I kind of heard half of Mar Mauricio's like stuff. So um, it's kind of like his idea of like healthcare. It's always going to have, they always need jobs and when you come out of college, you just really want to do something that's professional related, but not that you are so specific where you can only find one type of jobs. Like for nutrition, I can have different opportunities to like work in hospitals or schools or restaurants. So 
I really like it because I don't have to go to a medical school to become a doctor, but at the same time, I'm also in the healthcare field doing what I like. Okay. Um, what was the biggest challenge during your transition from high school to college? If there was a difficulty in your transition and if there wasn't, please expand on why you think that was the case. Um, well, personally, I think the hardest part of the transition was trying to find a balance of how, um, how I'll need to, I guess, transportation wise, um, because, um, I guess, um, moving, um, away from my home wasn't really the hardest part. Um, I feel like I was able to transition away from staying with my parents and my family and moving in to being completely alone a lot easier than most people was. Most people were able to. Um, I didn't really feel homesick or anything like that. Um, but it definitely does um, impact, like, because the distance, there's not, um, the distance between where I am and where home is is not that bad. But for definitely some people, the hardest part of the transition is um, leaving your family behind and moving to a completely new place. But I feel like what really helped with my transition is the fact that um, here in Corpus Christi, we're like um, a one big family. Um, there's always something to do. There's always a way to connect with new people. And um, one of the biggest things was that um, the first few weeks, uh, the first few weeks, instead of just like leaving everyone to like um, settle in and just like get used to the campus, they were welcomed. We had um, waves of welcome, which is for almost two weeks. We just had a bunch of welcome events um, where people were able to meet people, people came out, and then um, different prizes were offered um, for people. And like, we had like a bunch of different games, a bunch of different stuff to like welcome everyone coming to the island and doing everything and stuff like that. So I feel like that was a big help to my transition that um, caused me to like not feel as nervous or like as homesick. Um, yeah. So mine, mine is a, mine's a two part, two part to this question. Um, my first part is letting my pride go. So when I came in, you know, high school for me was pretty easy. Pretty much all A student A's and B's out of what, like a five nine GPA out of six. I, I did pretty well for myself, right? But you know, once you get into college, the whole the whole level of of rigorness is just different. It's it's insane. And I had such pride. You know, I was I wasn't doing well for my freshman year in one of my courses. And you know, with that big pride I had, I was like, you know, I'm gonna do I'm gonna, I can do this. I don't need anyone. I don't have to ask questions. I can do this on my own. Um, so yeah, that was my biggest, that was one of my biggest like factors transitioning from high school to college is letting your pride go, you know, ask for help. If you need that help, go out there. And my second one is discipline. So my freshman year in college, you know, I had all the freedom in the world to do whatever I wanted. Um, and I didn't, I didn't make the right choices. I did everything but study. So that kind of cost me a lot, uh, even till today, I'm still working on that, even though I'm doing pretty much, you know, I'm doing well for myself, but you know, you gotta have that self-discipline. You gotta have that time management. You gotta pretty much have that grit, right? You gotta have that, that ambition that you're gonna do better. You know, you're here for a reason. You're here to get a degree. You're here to get a job, a career. So, you know, make the best of it. Yuri, I know you've kind of changed your major to different things. How has that process been for you? So I came in as an applied mathematics major because I love math in, in high school, you know, math. Like I said, you know, high school is pretty easy, at least to me. Um, so I did pretty well in, in terms of math. But when I came here, uh, like I said, the whole rigorousness is just different. And, you know, I just I stopped enjoying I stopped enjoying math. And then from there, I started pursuing something different, something that, you know, will still hold value to me, will still hold my belief. Right. I wanted to be a scientist, but I also wanted to be a businessman. So I switched to business and concentrated in financial planning. That's what I'm doing right now, which there's still, you know, the math part of it. Right. Um, so I still haven't lost, you know, my identity. What I came in is just a different route, but you know, don't, don't let that discourage you because people here, they change majors a lot of times. Some people, some, some are seniors, they don't even know 
um, if that's the major they want to do. So, like I said, you have time. You do your right. I think that's good to mention, like you say, you know, you had two different routes that you were thinking of. So either one, you felt like you were still going to be true, stay true to yourself. I think that's important. Um, and then the other thing is the fact that you found something that's maybe not similar. To, you're still using some of the same skills and some of the same subjects. You're still taking some of the same classes that you would, but you just switched majors. So even though it's not exactly what you thought it was, you're still able to do some of that same stuff. And I'll tell you what, I'm happy right now with what I got. So good. Risa, I think you were going to say something. Okay, so to help with the transition from high school to college is definitely attending one of the freshman camps. So especially like for me, I went to a university where no one from my high school attended. So going to freshman camp was a big thing for me. I met a lot of new people, but a part of attending to a freshman camp is that you have to put yourself out there. Like you have to talk to other people, be able to communicate with others. And also like once you already move into campus, just make your dorm, your dorm whenever you need to sleep. So just make it like your bedroom. Don't always be in there. Like if you're trying to study, maybe your dorm's not gonna be the best place to do so. So try to explore campus, especially if it's your first year so you can get as much as experiences as possible. Um, if you, participated consistently do you feel that ccc prepared you well for your senior year and did we prepare prepare you well for college i feel like that's definitely from all of us <laughs> um i feel like i mentioned before is that i was able since i was like the first class in terry to actually be able to participate with ccc we saw a lot of different staff members and then and be able to work with each one of you. I feel like it definitely did help me personally because I was unsure of what university I wanted to attend at first and hearing everybody's perspective, especially knowing like some of the staff members did come from out of state. That was an important factor for me too. I feel like uh, CCC definitely helped a lot, um, uh, especially with the college visits. I know um, that really helped me being able to like get some colleges crossed off my list. I know that um, I probably wouldn't have been able to visit those colleges had it not been for CCC. So that was definitely something that I feel like I was greatly helped in. And also the just the application process and like I um, being able to have that set time just to focus on college applications, scholarships, everything that you need to get done before you actually become a college student. Being able to be in CCC and having the chance to actually do that um, actually helped like a lot. Yeah, I think you guys really uh, prepared me very well for anything that I was going to face. I mean, in terms of like the document that I had to turn in, you know, like I always say, um, whatever I was taught in CCC, I use it to help others as well. I just give other people advice that are maybe, you know, uncertain of whether they should go or shouldn't go to college, you know, try to change some, some of individuals' minds and tell them to not be afraid and if they need any help. And I can, I always have, you know, CCC to, to give me some advice as well, you know, I don't want to misinform any anybody so that's another important thing that i learned is just all that information use it for to help others as well so those are all the questions that we had there were a couple um that came in while i was asking um one of the first ones was how do you get over homesickness your first semester of college i think that's a really good question Well, College Station isn't that far away from Houston, so um, first semester I definitely came home a lot, like at least once or twice a month, but second semester, um, well, obviously half of it is online now, so I'm just at home, but um, yeah, I didn't come home as much second semester, like when we were on campus. Can you repeat the question? So, sorry, um, how did you get over homesickness that first semester away from home? 
So, you know, you're used to being at home with your parents, your family, your siblings, if you have them, and now you're kind of taken away and, and in a completely different environment, don't know anybody. How did you transition into the whole college experience? I did technically, um, basically, I did a lot of FaceTiming with my family. It was like, um, it would get crazy sometimes. It'd be like seven different people FaceTiming all at once and like everyone talking over each other and yelling and screaming. But one big thing that I did was FaceTiming just because, um, especially during the fall semester, I didn't have the opportunity to go back home too many times um, just because I didn't have like a specific means of transportation. So it'd be like a three hour bus ride there and back. And so it'd be like, and the financial situation to be able to afford a ticket to bus um, to Houston and back wasn't like in my favor. And plus, like the classes, um, you don't get as many long weekends during the um, break. So you, if you decide to go home, you might be like giving up some class time to be able to go home and like spend time with my um, with your family. And then definitely another thing is like, um, so like um, I tried to like. Um, in order to get home with my home, uh, get like my homesickness under control, I basically just FaceTime, talk to them a lot and stuff. So like, I usually had to, I had to wait until like um, the longer breaks, like um, Thanksgiving break, spring break, stuff like that in order to actually be able to go back home. So especially during the fall semester, I wasn't able to like go home as much as I would have liked, but I definitely having that like, um, the break time is way different. You get, um, compared to when you're in high school, you get two weeks, like, versus um, once you're in college, you get, like, two months off, basically. So, like, that really helped um, with the homesickness, um, just like that. Um, and then that motivation, like, my, to, like, uh, that you're doing something not only for yourself, but for your family, that also, like, helped with the homesickness, like, big time for me. Okay, another question, uh, Mauricio more so directed towards you. I know you saw it earlier. Does kinesiology offer a lot of scholarships or financial aid opportunities? Yes, yeah, so in our department, um, they do offer scholarships that are more geared to our kinesiology majors or our kinesiology students um, in terms of like internships and other programs that you're interested in. Uh, you actually, I'm actually going to take a class next semester that requires me to go out and actually look for a place, for a physical therapy place or rehab, rehabilitation um, place that will allow me to, you know, just practice what I've learned and oh snap! Sorry, did I think my internet was kind of messing up there? But yeah, like I was saying, I'm actually going to have to go to a facility where I basically shadow. I I shadow. Okay, hold on one OT moment, Marisio. or an OT, and there's other types of internships that you can do during the summer, and the school notifies you of those opportunities. So definitely look into those, even if you're like not taking classes during the summer. You know, take a take a take a leap and just. So you did break up there a little bit, Mauricio. I think the he was trying to say that, um, so he's going to have the opportunity to kind of go into one of the major cities near Kingsville um, and get some shadowing experience. Um, the thing with a lot of funding, I guess, or scholarships for specific majors, it might be dependent on your university and how they fund um, or how they find funding for that um, major. So it may be a question to ask that department on the campus that you're considering. Did I get that right, Mauricio? Um, next question, 
Um, I know I saw Brisa reply to it in the chat, but what are some sure. websites or organizations um, that you use to fund your education to find scholarships? So, like I mentioned, FastWeb is really big on it. So, um, it's like you create your own portal type of thing, and then it tries to match scholarships based on like what your GPA in high school is, what you plan on majoring in, and also based on what other activities you've done on campus. So that's that's good to use in high school and in college. So it really does help you. And once you get your college portal, you can also start looking for scholarships on there. And I know CCC also sends out scholarships whenever they're open and they have like a whole form where it shows like different scholarships that you can be applying to. So definitely look into those. And for the one that asked that, I think um, a lot of it is going to be doing research. Um, so FastWeb is great. Those, a lot of those may be harder to win because they're national scholarships. Um, CCC definitely encourages students looking for the local scholarships. So there's a lot of scholarships that only Spring Branch students can apply for, or only Fort Bend County residents can apply for. So some of it's going to be you doing your research, um, but most of them, Natalie's done a very, very good job of maintaining our scholarship list that she sends out regularly. So like Brisa said, the list that we send out is pretty, pretty complete also. Okay. Yeah, another thing that I realized after coming um, to college is that colleges actually offer scholarships. So, like, if you're a freshman, they have portals that have scholarships specifically for freshmen. If you're a sophomore, they have specific scholarships for sophomores only. So, I know, like, a lot of those, like, are um, they're easier to apply for. Not many people are applying for them. Not many people know about them. But those are, like, scholarships that, um, like, they're really, like, good scholarships that are really easy a lot of them don't reply, require essays or anything like that so it's just like you go and click a few buttons type some info by yourself and then you're automatically like um, entered for that scholarship so that's another thing I think um, another resource that you can go look for scholarships is definitely your advisors, like especially for me when I was in high school, we had like a college advisor, like she specifically helps you to like get scholarships and everything, get ready for college. And like having a good relationship with um, people like your advisors, they are pretty much the direct link between you and the people that give you the scholarships, like they are the ones that receive the applications directly and if you have a good relationship with them they will be like oh hey I just got a scholarship from this this and this and I think you should definitely apply for it and your advisors definitely will become like your best friend your senior year. I'm gonna add to, to some of that so in terms of scholarships um, I know CC or Kathy knows that I've had a lot of issues with financial aid here at Texas A&M University but don't let, don't let that discourage you. Um, one big example that I always use is just go to financial aid and ask them, be like, hey, what scholarships do you guys have for me or what scholarships are available? Um, sometimes all it takes is just sim something, something simple that's just like, hey, is there any available? Uh, I went there one time and I asked them, I was like, hey, um, I'm having trouble paying for school. I'm looking for some scholarships, you know, do you recommend any? And, you know, 20 minutes later, I walked out with about 8,000 in scholarships. So just go ahead, you know, don't be afraid. Take that first step and just ask. I think that's a very, very good point, Ariel. I had to do that in college too, advocating for yourself. If you're not comfortable with it now, I think that's definitely something um, that college is going to teach you. You're going to have issues and struggles that you're going to have to find a solution for. And sometimes the solution is simply asking the question. Good point. Okay, so speaking on scholarships, um, we do have a question about TASFA. What are some TASFA eligible scholarships that you found or how did you um, fund your education being a, ta a student that is TASFA? All right, so uh, for TASFA students, I'm a TASFA student myself. Uh, there is a lot of uh, first generation type of scholarships that I found uh based on your race as well but a lot of the TESFA um 
scholarships that are offered. A lot of them here are in here here in Texas, uh, especially school based. Uh, they look a lot into diversity, and so if you are from not from the the United States, then you you are provided those opportunities as well that are just more geared towards you. And so uh, for task for, task for other options that are available, maybe some of the local scholarships that are mentioned or brought about in like, let's say a, a bank or maybe uh, based on, on, on school, on some, some some schools, some organizations here in Spring Branch offered some uh, scholarships for Texas students as well. So. so you broke up there just a little bit, Mauricio, from what I heard, you're saying local scholarships are good, finding um, organizations here in Texas that will help fund um, education for TASFA students. I know you said you're from um, a school in Spring Branch, so you found a lot of scholarships were offered or given to counselors at, at Spring Branch that kind of helped you out. Is that what you were saying? Yes. Okay. Correct. Um, there's another question. You guys are asking really good questions. It says, as you may know, 15, and I see Mauricio and Rachel kind of um, went into depth a little bit on this one, but if you guys could elaborate for everyone. So it says, as you may know, 15 hours is the recommended amount of hours to take during college um, to graduate in four years. Would you say 15 hours is too much, too easy, or just right? For me personally, I think 15 hours is like basic average. Um, like for me, for the first two years, um, for this semester and last semester, I took um, roughly about 15 hours. Um, and um, in the fall, I'm planning on taking 16. So it really depends on the workload because some of the courses, they don't actually count. Like I know I'm taking a few um, lab courses and those, um, although they don't count um, as like separate hours. So it's basically you get a lecture, a lab and a seminar, safety seminar. And then so the, the hours you get for your lab, um, it's, counted with the um, actual lecture course. So although I'm taking like 18 hours, um, on my transcript, I only say it's like 16 to 15. So I would definitely say like, it depends on how your um, how you work um, in order for you to be able to like decide on how many hours you're taking. If you're able to like um, manage the workload, then that is definitely like something that you can do um, it really does depend on the university as well. I know some universities have like different, like not hours you can take, but um, for me personally, I would say 15 hours is like um, the basic, like, um, yeah. <laughs> I think um, I kind of went into it like typing the answer out, but it really depends on a lot of different factors, like just like how long like Blondine said, like the way they got to 15 hours per semester is because a normal, like typical degree, your whole degree over the four years would be 120 hours. So some degrees, like some majors might be a five year degree. And it really depends on what major you're choosing because I have friends that are maybe in engineering or architecture, like sometimes each semester they have to take 15 hours or more in order to finish their degree in four years. So it depends on how long you want to take to finish your degree and the type of classes you're in because like how Blondine also went into it saying lab courses, some lab courses are like four credit hours. But so even though maybe, oh, I have less than 15 hours, but maybe like most of my classes are really lab heavy, like really like huge workload like courses. So first semester, um, I said I only did 13 hours because I didn't want to put too much pressure and hours on myself when in the beginning, because you definitely want to get used to everything. And with this new whole like workload thing, you want to find new ways to study and just really take like ease yourself into the new environment. I completely agree, Rachel. It 
pretty much depends on when you want to graduate, you know, what major you're in, what courses are you taking. Some of these 100 level courses are as tough as 300, 400 level courses. Um, maybe it's a lab that's two hours, but you know, the, the amount of effort you're putting in is, is like a whole class that's worth four credit hours. So it just depends. Um, like she said, you know, the norm is 15 hours. If you want to graduate in four years, you got to take 15 hours every semester. Um, but with that, it's also the discipline as well. You know, it depends on how, how well you manage yourself. You know, uh, I did 18 hours last semester because I wanted to get my Aggie ring just in time or um, I just want to graduate, right? Just want to graduate, that's the thing. So you got to have self-discipline. You got to teach yourself. You got to pretty much find the resources out there for you. Uh, one thing I do recommend before you even, you know, go to college is research your classes, right? There's things such as rate my professor. I know A&M has the, the transcripts, I believe. Those, those help me out a lot. You know, there's classes out there that have a, a, a GPA distribution about a 4.0, right? If I can get into a class that has a distribution of 4.0 in terms of another class that has a 2.5, for the same class, right, I'd rather, I'd rather take the 4.0 and make my life easier. So that's one thing. Definitely, definitely do your research on what class you're taking. Um, you know, consolidate with your friends. Be like, hey, is this engineering class hard? Is this easy? Do you recommend me taking 15? Uh, like I said, just do your research. That helps out a lot. And for, for some of us who don't know, Rate My Professor is simply a website where you go in, you put in the university that you're attending, um, and you can, students literally rate their professors. So they take different classes and they say, oh, this professor is like this, this is how the class is, you definitely need the book, or this teacher doesn't really give tests or quizzes, it's really easy, you'll get an automatic A. So it's just students giving their honest opinion about the professors, for those of us who might not know what that is. Since we're on the subject of professors, there's a question that came up. Do you think professors are nicer and better understanding towards freshmen or do they not care? Okay, so I think like this is a question that really should be asked because a lot of times in high school, teachers are always like, your professor is not going to care about you. They're not going to care what you do, whether you fail or whether you pass or fail. It's not, um, it, they don't care. But like, um, that's completely not true. It's like professors, um, they really do care about you if you're willing to talk to them, um, like um, actually like um, give them information about what you're going through, they'll be able to help you. If you're just going to go to class and not do your work and not talk to them, they're, they're not going to like know when you need help and they're just going to like, you know, as to be like the basic form of communication, you have to be willing to communicate with your professors for them to like be able to like help you and like do give you the like resources that you need and like definitely like some professors like they're not going to care they're only going to be there to teach you and like get you out of their class but some of them like a lot of them they actually do care they want to see you like succeed as well and like definitely like i know like for me here in corpus it's like um i had a professor who gave me an extension on an assignment that i didn't even know was due so it's like it really is like you have to be able to communicate with your professors like uh, one thing that's really good is like um, going to office hours like my first semester I was failing some of my classes like I was failing one of my classes in particular really terribly and then going to office hours I was able to get like the information I needed get the help that I needed and that got me up to a beat so it's like definitely being able to communicate with your professors like showing that you care about like um, actually passing your class so I'm not going to say that no, per, like professors don't care about you and only want you to like get out of their class. They definitely want you to like talk to them and like give them the information about how you're doing, um, if you need help with something, stuff like that. And just to decipher office hours, um, for those of us who don't know, is basically when your teacher just literally exactly what it is, they open up their office um, and students can come in and ask questions on homework or assignments or tests or anything related to the subject. So it's kind of like, it's tutoring. Something to add on, um, I think Blondie like really like captured everything, but to sum it all up, I think professors don't like see you as like, oh, you're a freshman or you're just my student. They really see you as like a human being. And the only expectation most professors really have is how responsible you are. They want you to like, they just want to see you being responsible when it comes to your work. If you don't know how to do your work, do you know how to ask for help? Do you go find them and actually talk to them about it. Like, it won't be like, they are lenient if, because they see you as a human being, but they, 
the only expectation that they really want to see is that you're responsible when you're doing your work. Matt, uh, to Rachel, uh, these professors are human, right? These professors were in the same position as you were maybe eight, 10 years ago. So they understand what you're going through. They understand what life is. Um, like the biggest takeaway, like like Rachel said, and Blonde, if you don't, if you don't take anything away from this, the biggest thing is talk to professors. Just definitely talk to them. Some of them might even give you a great boost just for talking to them, just because they know your name. And personally, I've <laughs> I've had that before. So something as simple as like, "Hi, professor, how are you doing today?" Uh, can go a long way for you. So definitely use the resources that you have. You're paying for them anyway, so go to office hours, do all that, advocate for yourself. Thanks for mentioning that, Uriel. Like he said, you're paying for this. <laughs> I know a lot of us think, oh, you know, I'm, it's a lot different from your high school. You know, high school, it's public education. Everything's fun in that way. In, co in college, even if you do choose a public um, university, you are paying for this. And if you're not paying for it, even if you have a full ride, your financial aid that has your name on it, you're paying for it, okay? Um, so utilizing all resources on campus is important. And you're a professor. It's probably the most important resource because this is the person that's giving your grades and essentially is kind of deciding when you're going to get your degree. Okay, so I think that's very important to, to remember. I believe we only have two more questions. I know we're getting close to an hour. So just two more questions. Um, sorry, one of them was in the question. What are some resources, and Rachel answered this one, so if you could just kind of elaborate so everyone could see your answer. Um, what are some must resources or items for college, such as an agenda, talking to your advisors, different things for your dorms, mattress pads, what are some things you would suggest that are your things that if you, you probably couldn't go a day without using or looking at? Definitely so, my planner. You can go, Rachel. Okay, I would definitely say like a planner or calendar. Um, I, I work on campus. And so usually um, before like COVID-19 and all that, I'd be running, I'd, going, I'd be going from class to work and then to like SI sessions or anything like that. So it's definitely like good to have like some kind of planner, whether you use your phone or anything like that, because um, you get really busy in college and sometimes you're gonna forget um, you have an assignment due at, eight, um, at 11.59 or you're gonna forget that you have this or to do at this time. So I would definitely say a planner is a must have. Um, for me, that's probably, that's probably it. Okay, anyone else? So kind of reiterating what I typed in the answer boxes. Um, I definitely agree. I literally can't live without my planner slash calendar. Um, the, Cause the first thing that I do in the beginning of each semester is each class is going to have like a really long syllabus and your professor is gonna list all the work this whole semester you're gonna do. So it's gonna be like the first time you see it, you're gonna be like, oh my God, this is a lot of work. But if you start like sitting down and write down all the due dates and important dates in your planner, you'll be like, okay, so I have this much like time to do this and then that. So once you plan it all out, um, it will be much better. I know a lot of us procrastinate because I'm definitely one of those people. Um, once you really have the planner out, you'll really have a, you'll be more organized of like what work to put first. And again, these are professors, they're not your high school teachers. So they're not gonna baby you and be like, hey, tomorrow or a week from here, like you have this dude. After they give you your syllabus, a lot of them are not going to remind you anything anymore. So it's really important for you to remember all the due dates and planner is just great for that. I agree with both of them. Yeah. If you don't know what a planner is, you're going to learn the hard way once you get here. Um, it helps a lot with time management. You know, sometimes college gets so busy, you, for, you, even, forget how, you even forget to eat. So sometimes even just writing it down is like, hey, six o'clock, I got to go eat, right? So. Like they said, you know, planner is a must, must have resources. Even if you don't like writing it down, I use my phone. I use my, my Google calendars. It has reminders. It tells me when I have to do this. I even set them about five days before a test so I can study. Uh, yeah, like I said, it's, you know, pretty good time management. It helps you with your skills. It, it gives you discipline. It tells you, you know, when the big, big dates are. Any other suggestions? Sorry, go ahead, Brisa. 
So I definitely agree with the planner. I tried a physical planner my first few weeks of college didn't work out for me. So I completely ditched the planner and I started using my phone because I'm like, I always have my phone on me. So what better resource than my phone? So yes, Google Calendar will be your best friend because you can color code everything. So it's like you have a physical planner, but it's on your phone. So I feel like that works the best. Um, whenever it comes to dorm life, um, I do recommend a mattress like a mattress pad because um, college mattress is not too comfortable. So yeah, mattress pad is the way to go. Um, don't get too many decorations because whenever you move back home, you're going to be like, why did I even bring this in the first place? So I don't recommend that. And also whenever you are moving to college, if there's a store nearby college, just plan and get stuff once you're there. Just bring like the essentials that you need so you carry less whenever you're moving in. Like, let's say you're at the top floor or whatever, it's gonna be a lot for you to carry. Another thing, yeah. um, I don't know how many people use like notebooks, but personally, I'm not like a notebook person when it comes to taking notes in class. A lot of the times these professors have like PowerPoints or in slideshows. And what I do is like, I print them out and stuff like that. And the most like, I can't live without my binder and a hole puncher either. Like what I'll do is literally everything that are printed out, I have to put them organized like in a binder. Like it's like right next to me right now. So like, I can't live without it. Even though we're doing online, I still print out notes. I still write things down. It's really important to write notes instead of like, you know, a lot of people go to college and started typing notes on their laptops in class, but writing it down really gives you a better like, way of memorizing things to me. So I like writing notes down on like filter paper and just putting them in the binder instead of using a notebook for everything. I think you guys have made yeah. really good points. Um, the planner is definitely something that we um, have suggested to the students, just like you said, Rachel. Um, I've told them myself, you know, that syllabus is everything that they have. So it's good. Those two weeks, those papers that are due in two weeks are easy to kind of creep up on you but if you put them in that planner though they're really easy to kind of remember and and not forget and have to ask for an extension or anything like that so we're going to wrap it up there's just one more question um i guess with everything kind of going on with the COVID 19 and a lot of us back home and having to move to online classes do you plan on going back i know some of us may be close to graduation um how do we feel about taking online classes and what advice would you give for the juniors or seniors that are hoping to be on campus? Well, the seniors especially hoping to come back to campus in the fall or go to campus in the fall. Definitely, um, being our mind is, um, it takes a lot of dedication. It takes like the motivation to do your work. And I know like um, for some of my courses, I'm like perfectly fine online, but some of them I would really rather be actually in class, especially for the lab courses it's like really hard to do a lab where you have to like gather data and like um, measure data and do everything. It's really hard to do all that online and like have like the correct information and like so, stuff like that. So definitely like online. Um, for some of my courses, it is easier. And then for some of them, it's harder, especially for exams. I know we, for some classes, I get an extended time, like more time to be able to do the exam. And then some of them are shorter, like they um, take out time time from the exam so usually like I know for some classes it's like you get the whole class period um to do this exam so it's like an hour and a half but then once you transition to online you only get like 50 minutes so it's like so it really depends on your work method on uh, if that answers the question mm -hmm. anyone else so I do I want to go back to campus so bad like, I love being at home, but it's really hard to concentrate when you have a lot going on at home and you have things going on with, like, online college now. So, for, like, Blondine said, it is hard for some courses when they just go fully online because you would like to have that one-on-one -on -one experience, especially for labs. So, I'm a chemical engineering major, so my chemistry classes, I would really like to have face-to-face -face instead of just having them online. So like with professors and everything, they will try to cooperate with you, but it's also hard for them if it's, this is a whole new experience for them. So going fully online is a learning process from both sides. So once 
we do get on campus like I guess I took some opportunities for granted and now that I'm not on campus I'm like definitely whenever we come back I'm gonna go do this and I'm gonna go do that so yeah I think um being with this whole online thing um better things or I'm home that's great and better food that's also great um <laughs> oh another thing that's great is I get the refunds for the dorm rooms and stuff so money back to me but what's not good is um you know we spend half like the semester already getting used to everything especially the exams each professor have their own style of exams so oh i already took some i finally got used to their exam styles and all of a sudden everything is switched online so i have a new format that i need to get used to and some professors they're like okay we're still gonna do lectures, we're gonna Zoom just like this. I'm just gonna lecture and look at your faces. But some professors, they're like, I'm just gonna upload a video of me talking to myself and you're just gonna have to watch it on your own time. So when it comes to that, I, I find it really helpful to me to really keep that same schedule that I always have, even though they're uploading videos, not necessarily Zooming at us. Um, so I still wake up at a certain time to watch those videos to kind of retain that sense of normalcy and making sure that I'm getting work done at the normal rate. Yeah, and you all made a great point in talking about one important characteristic for being a college student is you have to be flexible as well as be able to be adaptable to whatever happens. Because we know maybe for some students they think, oh, because this is happening, I should just stop trying, which is not the case. So thank you all for saying like, no, you've got to keep doing the work because you have to make the grade somehow and that it's important to communicate with your professor if there's something that isn't clear or concise. I and mean, kudos to you guys for rolling with the punches because mm -hmm. I can only imagine if I was still in college right now and this happened, I, like you said, Rachel, it's just you're used to certain things and then all of a sudden it's just like, nope, everything's going to change. Even the grading, the grading system of each classes of each class and different things like that. So, like I said, you guys are you're doing good, <laughs> you're doing great. We're proud of you, of course. And I think that was the last question we had. Um, thank you guys so 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 much for for coming on. Um, thanks for the students that came in. I know this time um, we sent the long, wrong link out, so hopefully next time we can get more of you guys in. We'll try to have this again, try to do this again. Um, if you guys are available, we'd be, more, we'd be more than happy to have you guys come in. We're, next time we do, we'll have some different topics, different things that we'll discuss. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know there were some questions like, oh, where's someone from UH here? So we'll try to get some different schools represented also. I just realized we're all like a &M and of some sort. <laughs> It's so a great, great job. Thank you so much. Thanks for everybody joining. Uh, we, uh, we delayed it a little bit today to let some of them take their exams online. So hopefully you all did well. Um, tomorrow night we have our prom for seniors. So you'll be getting some more information about that. We're excited. And um, we'll see you uh, next week. Have a good weekend. But for seniors, we hope we see you tomorrow night. So y'all, thank you so much for joining us. Y'all are awesome. Thanks. Thanks for having us, Ms. Kathy. Thanks. <laughs> thank you. Thanks.